What's up internet, Dicecrick here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to set up a Japanese futon. And that's because Japanese futons are not only affordable, they're also comfortable, and they also can help you save a lot of space inside of your house. Uh, because they fold up and you can put them in a uh, closet or just put them off to the side and then gain so much more room. So, let's start off by showing you our futon. Now, this futon is divided into three sections, so it folds up like a square. A lot of futons are actually softer, and so you can fold them up by three ways or four ways, whatever you have to, and you can just put it in the corner. But, set up for this is pretty easy. Just pick it up like this, and bam. We have the futon set outward. Now, the next step is taking your futon, and I'm gonna step over here, and putting a sheet on it. So, our sheet here actually has a zipper here on the end, and what you do is you unzip the zipper all the way around. Now, you can take a regular sheet and just tuck it under the sides, but I totally recommend getting one of these special futon uh, sheets. So you just take it, open it up, and slide it in there. So, let's take care of that real quick. Okay. Now that we have this sheet on, uh, one of the reasons why I recommend this particular sheet instead of just a regular sheet to wrap around it is because it wraps completely around the mattress and that just means when you wake up, the sheets aren't coming off the mattress and you don't have to keep on resetting that. So, but I don't know about you, but for me, I love not having to reset my sheets every day. For the Japanese futon, I really love it. Now, the next step is you can either add a duvet, like this one. The duvet is just like a nice cushiony blanket that is going to help you uh, retain a lot of heat, a lot. This particular duvet doesn't have a cover on it. Typically you would have the duvet and then there would be a duvet cover that you could switch out with different designs and stuff. Ours is still in the mail, so we haven't got to try that out yet. But uh, you can either set this on or during the winter a lot of people will set an additional blanket on their bed or on their Japanese futon and then they'll put the duvet over that. So for right now I'm just going to be setting this up. I got this in the way so it's not going to look super nice, but there we go. And naturally, the last thing you need is a pillow. Take a pillow, put it here, bam, you're good to go. Another thing that you should know is <laughs> we, because I'm married, we actually have two futons. And we originally were gonna try to shoot for a queen size futon. If you're a single person, a single or a twin size futon, uh, also known as double <laughs> in Japanese, they're gonna be perfectly fine for you. Don't worry, it is a great size. We just wanted the queen because again, there's two of us. And so what we've settled with is we actually have two single futons and we put them next to each other, which I'll be honest, isn't the best uh, because there's like that crease in between the two futons. So if you can find a queen size futon or a king size futon, if you're married or just want two people in it, then definitely check out the queen or king size if you can find one. On Amazon, there's a few, but there's a thickness that I would recommend. I would go above two and a half inches. In the description of this video, if you're interested in checking out a futon or getting a duvet for a futon or any of that, I actually have a number of different links for you to check out. I really recommend the link to the uh, futon that we're recommending because when I was searching on Amazon, there's a bunch that have a 2.5 inch thickness and I think that that's just a little bit too small. My futon is an eight centimeter, which comes out to a little bit over the 2.5 inches. So in addition to that, I wanted to tell you a couple extra little facts about futon. So let's talk about that. So a couple things that I wanted to mention about the futon, which I believe is kind of a plus versus a regular mattress is probably once a month, you should take your futon and you should hang it out in the sunlight. Now, the reason why they do this is because the sun has natural rays that'll kill off a lot of the bacteria that is on your mattress. Now, with a regular mattress, 
I don't know the exact stats, so I'll put them in the corner here. But after a certain number of years, there's actually a portion of the weight of your mattress that is made up of just dead skin cells and other just nasty things. So with a Japanese futon, you actually have the ability to put this out in the sun and it'll naturally kill a lot of the different bacterias and everything else that's on your mattress and in your mattress. So that's just one plus. Uh, now, if you actually have tatami inside of your house or if you have something like tatami underneath your mattress, uh, it's really good to make sure you fold up your mattress like either daily or bi-daily or maybe at least once a week so that any moisture that gets trapped under the mattress is actually going to have a uh, chance to dry up and just dissipate. Uh, so that's one other thing. And also, uh, I didn't mention it in the beginning of this video, but typically in Japan, they have a closet uh, specifically for Japanese futons. It's called an oshiire. Now, an oshiire inside of a typical Japanese house looks like this. Now, we are storing things a little bit differently than people might typically store inside their oshiire, but for us, we just needed the extra storage, and we don't typically put our futon inside of the closet. So, if you have a Japanese apartment, you know, definitely you can put it in there. If you're living inside of a Western home and you don't have a big closet like this, then you could just fold up your futon and put it in the corner of the room. That'll just free up a whole lot of room and you can use that extra space for whatever you want. Along with that, one quick disclaimer. The Japanese futon is not necessarily for everybody. Personally, myself, I love it. I haven't had any back problems or anything with it. My wife, Originally, we had like a thinner mattress, and so it wasn't as pleasant for her. But then we bought a thicker mattress, and now we both absolutely love them. And that's why in the description of this video, I'm actually including a link to a 3-inch futon, which is definitely going to be better than the 2.5-inch. Right now, I use an 8-centimeter futon, which we bought from Nitori. But Nitori, I don't believe ships to America. So that's why I'm putting an Amazon link for you guys. And also in the uh, description, I'll put a link to a little bit of extra cushion that are typically added to futon. That way, if three inches isn't enough and you want just a little bit extra cushion on top of that, you can get that as well. Now, one last thing, uh, if you already own a Japanese futon and you're enjoying it, please let me know in the comments. Uh, tell me about your futon experience. In addition to that, if you enjoyed this video and found it informative or helpful, please leave a like and also, why not consider subscribing? Here on Dice Quirk, we talk about Japanese culture, Japanese language, and Japanese travel. We also talk a little bit about the JET program, and so we'd love to share that with you guys. And if you're interested, later on, when it's available, I'm going to share our video about our Japanese apartment here in Kami. So, make sure you check that out if it's available, and we'll see you later. So, Dice Quirk, out.